So I'm at the back of my workshop, and when I've had a bit of spare time, I've just been working on getting these conifers removed. So as I'm chopping this down, I thought I'd have a go at a bit of green woodworking. And what I'm gonna do is try and make a shrink pot. They're an interesting idea. So out of this, I wanna cut a little section that has no knots in it, so no branches coming off. And I think I've just got enough in here. So I'm just gonna get that section cut out using the mitre gauge on the bandsaw. So I have the bit cut, but now I wanna get all the bark removed. So I'm just gonna use my little knives to get it all stripped off. I've got all the bark removed, but now I wanna drill out the center. So I found a false in a bit that looks like it's gonna be a perfect size. We're still leaving enough meat on the walls. I'm gonna get this chucked up in the pillar drill, and then I'm gonna try and drill through the center of this. I've only been able to drill so far through using the pillar drill, so I'm gonna use the handhold drill to finish it off. And what I have are these Forstner bit extensions. Now, the Forstner bit I'm using has an eight mil shank, so I've got the eight mil extension. I can get that put on and finish drilling through. Got it drilled out, but the sides on this aren't that even. So I'm gonna use the knife just to whittle away and try and even them up a bit. Sides are much more even now, but I think I'm gonna add some texture to it. So I'm gonna use these carving tools that I got and I did the pumpkin with. I'm gonna grab a gouge, get this put in the vise, and just add a bit of texture to the sides. So now I need a base, and what I need to do is cut a little groove in the bottom for it to go into. So I've got this new tool, this right-handed scoop. So now I can just get this tool put in there and scoop a little groove around the bottom. I now need a bit of wood to go into that groove. Now what I have is a bit I resawed a few weeks ago. So I can now trace around to get the shape, but that is gonna to be too small. So now I can go around the outside and just add a couple of millimeters on to take into consideration the depth of the groove I've cut. I can now use the bandsaw to get this cut out. So that scoop makes a five mil groove, but the bit of wood I've got is slightly thicker. So now I'm just gonna take the knife and shave a little bit off the top and the bottom so it fits in there. Have it trimmed down, so now it will fit into the groove, but will it fit in the pot itself? So if I've got this right, this will be very tight to get in, but it will go in without actually breaking the pot. So 
So that's it all done for now. Now, if this works, the green wood on the outside will shrink down onto the dry wood on the inside, making that base nice and tight in there without cracking the outside. So we'll take this in the house, leave it for a few weeks to dry, and then we'll come back to it. So the shrink pot has been in the house for over a month drying. Now it's nice and dry. The base is solidly in there, but as I've been staring at it for a month, I don't like the proportions of it. I think it's too tall and thin and it's still got the lid to go on. So the first job, I'm gonna trim it down a little on the bandsaw. So now I need to make a lid for this and I'm gonna do it out of three bits of wood. One bit is gonna go inside the pot Another bit's gonna go on top, and then I need a third bit for the handle. So this little offcut is gonna be really useful because I can use it as a template to draw out on the thin bit of oak and then get it cut out on the bandsaw. So that bit fits in there nicely. So now I'm gonna draw around the whole thing on the thicker bit and cut out another bit for the second part of the lid. So I've got the bits cut for the lid that I needed the bandsaw on, but it's blooming cold out here. So now I'm gonna go in the house and get this finished. I got the two parts of the lid glued and clamped together and left them to dry. Now I can get it put on the pot and I've oversized the lid. So now I can get a chisel, run it down the side of the pot and just trim the lid flush with the pot. So I've got it so the lid is much more flush with the side of the pot, but I still think the lid's a bit too chunky. So I'm gonna get it put in the vise using a bit of leather to protect it, and then use a gouge and some chisels to try to thin out the lid, trying to taper it down from the center to the edge. So I've kind of tapered the lid down and I think that looks much better. Now the good thing is with this kind of style of woodworking, the more tool marks in it, the better it looks I think, the more kind of rustic. So now it could really use a little handle to pull the lid off. So I've got a little stick and I'm going to try and cut a bit off that and carve the bark off. Now, to attach this to the top, I'm gonna to get a hole drilled. So a 10 mil hole is gonna be slightly bigger than this stick, and then I can just carve the stick down until hopefully I get the perfect fit. I'm just gonna get a bit of PVA wood glue into the hole and then put it in place. So I'm just gonna leave the glue to dry on this and then I'm gonna apply some finish. I'm just gonna go for some mineral oil. I'm just gonna get that brushed on and leave it to dry. So, 
that's it all done. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. It's a shame I snapped the little bit off the inside of the lid, but this was an experiment to see if I could make a shrink pot, and I did. It shrunk nicely, the base is in there nice and tight without cracking, which is what you want. And I think this is something I definitely want to try again, but obviously on a larger scale, this thing is tiny. It'd be great for a little tiny keepsake, like a ring or something, but not much else. So, thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos. Mm -hmm.